Everybody's Tyler here at the World Championships, checking in team number 4907, Thunder Stamps. Holy cow, this team is absolutely phenomenal. Hopefully you have seen their incredible jump, but we're gonna talk about this entire machine as it's extremely well built, coming out of Canada as well too. So to help me talk more about this robot, by the way, I have Julian, Adriana, and Alex. And like I said, the centerpiece definitely be a jump, but you gotta learn more about this robot and what's gone into it be a complete machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Alex, let's start out with your uh, drive base and we'll follow that cargo journey and then. So let's talk to you about, uh, for your swerve drive, uh, anything uh, unique you came up with, any modifications, and we'll go into your cargo as well. Yeah, so uh, we're using the Mark IV swerve drive modules from SDS. This is our third year doing swerve, first time purchasing modules. Uh, you know, we choose it, this kind of ties in with our intake as well because we can't shoot from everywhere on the field, so we use these swerve drive modules so we can get around really quickly, uh, and that, that we'll talk about the intake now. So uh, we can feed, we feed balls in through here, and they index up here. So we have a we have a ball we have a sensor there that detects when we have a ball in the index there, and when we're ready to shoot them, this flywheel is always uh, spinning. So we just activate our feeder, and it shoots it out. So I got to ask you from a packaging standpoint here. You know your climber takes up a lot, a lot of space for everything with that. So when you were designing your intake and shooter there, how did you uh, keep packaging in mind for that? You know, it wasn't really a big concern for us. It, it, it was a thought in our, the back of our minds, but. Honestly, when we got the whole jump mechanism sorted out, it just fit, and it was just a really nice, just worked. And then for Thunder Stance, where's your sweet spot on the field to shoot from? Like, where do you like to shoot from the most? Uh, we like to shoot inside the tarmac. That's anywhere around the field, because we, we have a limelight up here. We're not using the, the vision processing, but we use it as a, as a camera to sure. uh, line up our shots from all in the tarmac. You know, and I watched uh, a few of your matches from uh, a couple of your districts as well, too. And I got to say, I, I, you know, once again, a lot of attention is put on your client, but you guys are a good shooter as well, too. And, uh, you know, watching that as well, I think you really do bring that complete package. So uh, make sure if you watch some of their matches, check, take a look at their shooting capability uh, as well. Let's keep uh, moving on. We're going to go over to Julian's going to talk about uh, the uh, the climber area. So what do you actually call like this main assembly or what do you call so that? We actually have a really special name for it. We call it the air ram, All right. which stands for atmosphere into robot rapid ascent mechanism. You can see the decal on here. That's what that means. And so basically what that's saying is the energy source for our jump is a vacuum. So this giant piston here is the centerpiece of the robot and we pull it up to create a vacuum. And so the way that works is these winches on the side pull the piston all the way to the top, which then pulls a vacuum inside the tube. And so then the atmosphere is pushing back on this tube, pushing the piston down. And then we hold that in place, and when we release it, all the force is activated down. So that piston then flies down towards the bottom. And so that's where we gather all the force from. And these ratcheting winches, when the piston moves back down, the winches will get pulled up on. And that's where the two pieces of the robot come into play. So you can see here they're separated right now. We have the bottom piece here, the foot, and then the upper piece of our robot. And so using this pulley system, when the piston moves down, the upper piece of the robot moves up. And so that's where, how we transfer the force into the robot. And once the upper part of the robot is flying, then it hits these hard stops here and pulls the bottom piece up with it. We'll be showing your winch in just a moment too, but I gotta just ask you like, for, who came up with this, this idea in the first place? And then like, who was crazy enough to convince the rest of your team that this was gonna be something that worked? Well, so there's a lot of talk about it. You can read threads on Chief Delphi. There was, we knew that this was a possibility. Everyone yeah. was talking about a jump. And the main problem was figuring out where that energy was gonna come from. And basically our pneumatic discussion just kind of led us to the vacuum pump idea. And, and then we realized, well, instead of using a pneumatic piston, why don't we just flip it and make a vacuum piston? 
And then we got around all those pneumatic rules. And once the once the proof of concept that was there, the physics were there, we built the prototype. And when the prototype made it, we were like, we got to do this. That is so cool. Uh, you know, going as we continue your robot here, let's talk about the winch mechanisms uh, that we have. So uh, Adrian is going to cover a little yeah. bit more about that as well. Tune, we'll show off a little bit, demo that part as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So our uh, grappler is fully spring-loaded and mechanical, um, and we have a safety throughout that. So if our robot gets hit by another robot during the match, our grappler will not get set off because it is a manual preset. So if you look over here, this uh, pink string is attached to a motor, and when we are ready to jump, we turn this motor like this. So that pulls out. Let's just make sure it's all the way through. That pulls out from here. Sure. And we have a spring in this uh, area here. And when our when we're ready to jump, we come through here. When this is in, if our jump, um, if this is hit, it will not set on itself. But when we are ready, we come through and drop on itself. Now this is really good because there is no delay, um, and it, it, there's nothing that can break with it. Nothing programmed, anything like that. It's totally mechanical. Um, for example, throughout some matches, we actually have some that are bent but these are very easy to place. And this, sure. this lets us have something that works 100% of the time, and we can't fall off the bar once we're on it because we are in this, um, in, in this box, basically. So that's really safe for our robot, very consistent, and overall works really, really well. Uh, Julian, is there anything else from a, a safety standpoint that you want to cover on the spot, too? Because I know uh, you mentioned there's been you know, a lot of teams come up asking about how do you make sure it is safe, uh, that sort of thing. I know we just talked a little bit about that. Is there anything else to add? Yeah, for sure. And that was part of the design process. Like A lot of people were skeptical about the jump, mainly because you have to store all that energy. Yeah. And then you have to release it in less than a second. And so like coil springs, flywheels, all that, it, it's very dangerous ways to store the energy. What's very safe about ours is as soon as we're disabled, we have a power to switch solenoid. So as soon as our robot is disabled, our vacuum starts bleeding, and so we won't have any we won't have any uh, energy stored. About sure. after two minutes after a match, if we have winched but not jump, all that energy is gone. And so from the start of our design, we were planning for safety. We were planning to see when that energy is stored. We also don't have to preload any energy, so we only store that energy once we're in the hangar. So we play the entire match with no energy stored, and only in the last seconds when we're ready to jump, that's when we winch and that's when we have the energy stored. So it's always 100% safe. Well, what an absolutely incredible concept and a proven one now, too, uh, that has been seen all throughout the first world. So I uh, wish you best of luck uh, as we're filming this. Had a great first match, uh, so looking for a few more here as well. So good luck at World Championships. But thank you so much for uh, showing this off to the first committee. What an incredible design. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you so much. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.